So today, number 11 of the 25 random pieces of advice is make peace with your weaknesses. And I think the first way to make peace with your weaknesses is to realize that we all have things that um, we may not be the best at. And so the first thing I think when you make peace with your weaknesses to, is to realize, first of all, look at a weakness that you may have and then and then decide, is it something that you can learn and it won't be a weakness any longer? And is it something that you wanna spend the time learning about so it's no longer a weakness? Or is it something that you could ask for help on and, and get support with? We don't have to do everything. We don't have to be the answer to everybody's um, you know, the next, uh, the answer to everybody's question, if you will. That's why there's so many of us on this planet. So we can help each other and support each other and be with each other. And so to make peace with your weaknesses is to decide, is this uh, a weakness? Is it something that I have been ignoring and I can shift into a strength. Sometimes a weakness, it, we consider it a weakness just because we're afraid to do it. And it just takes um, the skill set or the decision to decide, I'm going to walk through that fear that I've set out in front of me and I am gonna, I'm going to shift that weakness into a, sh a, a strength. Sometimes we may consider a weakness something that somebody else will think, oh, well, that's just silly. Why is that a weakness? And, you know, embrace every part of you. Embrace your strengths. Embrace those things that um, you may be afraid of. Embrace those things that you may not be good at. It, what, it is what makes you who you are. And I think that we tend to want to be uh, everything to everybody and that's when we get into the most trouble because we can't be that and so I think by embracing your weakness you are really being true to yourself true to your calling true to why you're here and and that speaks volumes so when you can embrace your weakness in fact uh, something that I read said you know if you've got a little bit of weirdness going on embrace your weirdness you don't have to be everybody's cup of tea. I uh, remember when I lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and they would have music on the plaza on Friday night. And the thing that I loved most about Santa Fe is everybody would let their freak fly on Friday, dancing to the music at the plaza. You'd have all kinds of different people um, side by side dancing and and. Um, everybody just made room for everybody else and there there was no or didn't appear to be any judgment or any um, like oh stay away from me you're too weird it was just a place for everybody to be in community and everybody to be themselves and so sometimes embracing your weakness allows you to really find that inner strength to be true to who you truly are and when you can be true to who you truly are, then you kind of find that passion, if you will, or that calling of like, why am I here? If I am designed for God, to, by God for greatness, then why am I here? What's, what, do, what do I want to shift and change in the world? And sometimes it really is, I think, just being kind. Maybe we're here, we're not all here to be doctors or lawyers or scientists or solve the world's problems. And yet some of the biggest world problem is our separation. And so what if we really are here to learn how to be kind to each other and to love one another, regardless of our spiritual beliefs, our religious beliefs, the color of our skin, who we choose to love, as long as we aren't hurting each other or hurting animals or children or the elderly, then why do we care what two people love each other? 
It doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with my life. If you choose to love somebody that is the same sex as you, it, it just doesn't affect my life at all. And it's not that, um, I, I mean, I don't know what else to say about that, really. It doesn't affect my life. And when it affects somebody's life and they choose to be heterosexual, I wonder why they feel, I mean, why is that a threat to them? And so it's just something to ponder. What if our life's purpose as humans as spiritual beings having a human experience, what if our life's purpose is truly learning to love everybody exactly where they are, to listen to people when they talk, and to be there for people when they're in pain? What if that was everyone's life purpose? Might be a gentler, kinder, kinder world that we live in. So that's all the thoughts I have for today on make peace with your weaknesses. Um, I, and you know, your weaknesses can be those stories that you tell yourself in your head. So maybe take time to rewrite those stories. They don't have to be the truth of who you are unless you decide they're the truth of who you are. So I close today with the science fact of the day from the Daily Adam. Humans, that would be us, have two types of bones. Our skeletal system is made up of dense, hard material called cortical bone. We also have soft, spongy bones called trabecular bones, which make up part of some larger cor cortical bones. Boy, that's a tough one. As well as parts of the skull, pelvis, and ribs. So that's your science fact of the day. From the Daily Adam, I am Reverend Gail Dillon. Remember, make peace with your, with your weaknesses and maybe just decide to be kinder. Have a great day and I will talk to you tomorrow.